So now some graphical notations here. Normally to represent any latent variable, we always have to use a circle, okay? For observed variable, we always have to use boxes. For error term, always a smaller error, a smaller circle, okay, always. And for covariance, we will have bidirectional path, okay? So this is something we have to remember. For a structural equation modeling representation, we always have to use the same graphical notations. We cannot, uh, there are some studies actually which uses boxes for latent variables. That, that is not valid. We should not do that actually. So for example, this is one of our study, which is currently under review and maybe will be published in a few months. And as soon as it is published, I'll post the link of the study below, the, below in the video description. So here you see, this is our conceptual framework. Here you see, these are our exogenous variables, and these four, four of them, and we present them in a circle because it's latent variable. And this is also latent variable, this is also latent variable, right? And these arrows, they present regression, regression paths, okay? And here you will see the estimated model, okay? The structural equation estimated model. Each of the latent variables are measured with items. You see the items are in boxes, right? All the items are in boxes, right? Here, here, everywhere. And then our latent variables are still in circles and these are our regression coefficients and these are factor loadings, the smaller ones. And also you should always present the R square value. Whenever you present R square value of the endogenous variables, okay? And the exogenous variables, which are like likely the independent variables, they will not have any R square because they are predicting the endogenous variable. So endogenous variable will have some R square, okay? Just here, just another example here. You see, this is from another of my study, which is already published, and you can see the link below in the video description. So here you see, these are our latent variables. All of them are in circles, and our items are in boxes, okay? Right? Here you see, we have a covariance association. Here, remember that for simplicity, I did not present the error terms, okay? Here, actually, each of the items, they have error variances, okay? And for simplicity, I did not present the error variances, but here, the correlation, the covariance, here, the covariance association actually means the covariance between the error variances. And here, you see, we have two control variables, gender and age, which are observed variable and which directly affects the Finally, uh, the final endogenous variable, okay? And we made the regression paths bolder so that we can understand, okay, these are the regression paths. And these ones are, the, the factor loading paths are not bold and they're a bit thinner, okay? So that's one way of presenting it. And if you, if you do it in PLS, then actually you do not have to make this kind of figures yourself. PLS, you just get it in the software. If you use R, you can make the figures using commands, but normally the output is not really very nice. I have made a PowerPoint template and I just put and edit the values of the factor loadings and rename the latent variable names and item names. And it works fine for me. Very soon, you will find all the template and all the course of, of this video playlist in our website in researchhub.org.